All right, guys, I'm back with another DVD horror haul. I got four titles I'm going to talk about today, so I'm just going to get right into it. All right, first up, we got Lost After Dark. I found this yesterday, oh, on Sunday, at uh, Walmart. Um, I picked this up mainly because I love the cover art, and then I just was hoping that it'd be a decent movie. And I figured if, even if it wasn't, like, at least we got the nice cover art. Basically, this film was done in the style of a lost um, 80s slasher film. Um, basically, you get a group of kids. Uh, they're, they're at a party at a, at a high school, like a dance. And they decide they're going to steal the school bus because they really want to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods that one of the girls' father owns. So they, they steal the bus. They start heading there, and they run out of the gas. Then they decide to uh, spend the night in this secluded house, old farmhouse, but it turns out that the house is also home to a cannibalistic serial killer. So they're getting picked off by him, but one by one. Um, this film has a low rating on IMDb. But I think a lot of people that didn't like this film misinterpreted what it was trying to do. Like, it wasn't trying to be a good film in a classical sense. Basically, it was trying to be like what you would get when you would watch an old uh, 80s slasher film. The kids, they make um, bad decisions. You know, when they sh running when they should fight, fighting when they should run. You know, not leaving the central location and hadn't hidden it for the road they should have done. Otherwise, there'd be no movie anyways. But um, I did like it. I like how they made the um, the print look all worn out, you know, and stuff like that. Um, there's only one name actor in this film that I recognized, and that's uh, Robert Patrick. Um, he plays, like, the vice principal, who's also an ex-Vietnam vet, and he has all the best lines in this movie. It was actually kind of fun to see that. Another thing I liked about this movie, too, is they have all this generic 80s music playing. Like, they couldn't afford to have real music. But it was actually kind of nice hearing a lot of fake 80s music. Like, so, um, I'd recommend this one at least for um, a rental, if you didn't want to pick it up full price. Another thing about this film, too, is um, like a lot of great 80s um slasher films. This one was filmed in Canada and Ontario, Sudbury, Ontario, even though the story takes place in Michigan, which they make a big deal. But they don't even have like a real Michigan team. Like it's not the Spartans or the uh, Wolverines. Like the, their, their, their team is the Lancers. But I think it's high school. Those are college teams. So never mind. All right. Uh, next up, we got Blood Glacier. Um, this is an IFC Midnight release, and that's the main reason why I picked this one up. But uh, I was really looking forward to watching this, and when I finally did that, I was really disappointed that I did watch it. Still happy to have it in my collection, though I didn't pay very much money for it. Basically, you got these scientists, and they're out, like, in this Arctic-like area, and they're studying the effects of uh, uh, global warming. And um, they come across this, this red glacier, and there's got a life form in the, uh, in the red ice. But it turns out that this... Um, this life form has mutation properties in it, and all the animals in the area are, start to mutate. And uh, they're trying to cover this up because they still want the discovery, even though this shit is obviously dangerous. And, and it ends up getting people killed, and it's, it was really frustrating to watch this film. Like, the first mistake I made with this film was I should have watched it in its original German language, because it's a German film. Um, but I was tired, and I figured if I put on subtitles, I was just going to fall asleep. Um... So I watched it in the uh, in the English dub, which was really rough, especially on the scenes where people are panicking stuff. I think this is supposed to be uh, kind of like a horror comedy, but um, I didn't find it very funny at all. There's also this bizarre subplot where um, this one guy, he's like the technician that's working there at this at the station, and the reason why he's there is that th is because his girlfriend had an abortion and he broke up, and he's a few afraid to go back to civilization for some reason. But then he has, like, the family dog, or the, the pet that they were sharing, and the pet gets injured, and then the pet's dying, and that becomes a, a huge subplot. And somehow this film resolves both those subplots in the most bizarre way. It was so bizarre that I'd almost want to see a sequel if they ever made one to this movie. But, um, I don't know. This is such a strange film. I can't recommend this one. Not even for a rental. All right. Next, we have Extraterrestrial, and this was uh, directed by the Vicious Brothers. Uh, they made those Grave Encounters movies. 
I thought they were decent movies. This movie, thankfully, isn't a uh, found footage film like those ones are, though. Basically, you got a group of kids, and they're in this cabin in the woods, and um, the spaceship crashes near the uh, cabin, and they go and investigate, and they end up um, running afoul of these aliens. This film was okay. Um, I thought that um, it faltered a little bit towards the end, but um, it was still a decent watch. I'd recommend this one for a rental. Um, this one stars Michael Ironside and uh, Emily Perkins from the Ginger Snaps films. It was really nice to see her in some more genre stuff. The only thing I've really seen her in that was genre stuff since the uh, Ginger Snaps has been uh, those uh, couple of seasons of uh, Supernatural that she did. I thought she was kind of funny in that. Um, this is a Scream Factory release, and it's got uh, alternate artwork, which I was debating whether I was going to switch it, but I figured I'd leave it like the way you'd probably see it if you see it in the store. Um, I only paid two fifty for this. I'd recommend like a rental. I wouldn't recommend a purchase on this one. All right. And last up for this update, we have a Spanish horror comedy, and it's Witching and Bitchin' from uh, Alex de Iglesia. Now he made. Um, Tito Durango, um, Day of the Beast, and The Last Circus, and I liked all three of those films. Um, basically, you got uh, these guys that they, they, they pull this heist, and they, uh, it's on a jewelry store, and they steal all these um, engagement rings and stuff like that, like a big bag full of them. Um, it's kind of interesting, because at the beginning of the movie, they're dressed up as... Um, as comic characters like Spongebob and stuff like that and um, I don't know what they were thinking with that but that was really amusing and the first part of this film was this film was kind of structured very similar to like from Dust to Dawn where you have the crime portion of the of the movie and then the second half of the movie becomes more supernatural with these witches now the witches they need these um, they need the rings because these were engagement rings that were broken promises and that will complete their spell or something like that and these guys are on the run from the police so they end up going to this town that's full of these witches and they're trying to deal with the witches and stuff like that and the one that the bank robbers has brought his son along because he's estranged from his wife and it was his weekend to have him so he took him along to the bank robbery for some reason I mean the the jewelry store heist not bank robbery um, I did enjoy this film a lot. It, it's really weird. It kind of parts of it kind of have like a Sam Raimi, Evil Dead Two feel to it. Um, it's a very strange film, and but I, I like uh, this director's work. It's always kinetic, you know, like especially the stuff like The Last Circus. Um, I'd recommend this one for for a, a rental at least. But I really did enjoy this one a lot. And this one, which here, she's like my favorite scene there. She's like the one hot witch amongst the group. Um, so there you go, guys. That's my pickup. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.